Okay. All right. So we're going to look Sheridan. We're going to look at your code. Right? And uh, which one is it? Under arrays. Under arrays. I'm just going to close that. Which one? Picture size three. That one right there. And that's the one. Here it is. Well, let's see, this, this opening brace here is closed here. Then there's an else clause there. Okay, so this is taken care of, right? So this loop here, the opening brace is there and it's closed there. That looks good. And this function is opened here, closed there. So that looks all right. Down here, the indentation looks good to me. I'm just scanning for obvious uh, things. So it complains, that the compiler complains about this? Yes, it says it gets all the way to the second part of my loop, huh. the second loop, or to the hundred there. And it says um, I should have initiate t equals zero in parentheses, and then outside of it is in some place. But the main thing was it wanted that in parentheses. And then after it says t wasn't. I see. Well, initialized, right? Initialized. So it's saying it's complaining about t there in the initialization. Well, look, that's if. That should be four, right? Oh. <laughs> you would find something there. So two loops? Yeah. Well, it's a loop within a loop, right? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's see if that works. Do I need to change that? Oh, yeah, that should, uh, yeah, what is this anyway here? We're checking to see if everything is a zero. Yes. So this should be the if, if statement should start down here. Okay. Adjust those. Adjust the uh, indents. That's good. Does that else go with the if? <coughs> I'm just going to help out there a little bit, okay? Okay, there we go. So, x is set to zero, right? This is a, this function checks to see if every element in a is a zero. So x is that value that we're looking for, zero, right? So when you find your first zero, okay, when you find your first zero, which could be in zero in position zero, zero, you return true. So you're only you're returning true when you find one zero. Don't you want to return true when everything is a zero? Yes. Well you're returning true when you find one. Well, you obviously you can't you can't make a determination there about whether it's all zeros, right? Well, let's suppose let's take the opposite. Let's suppose you find something that's not a zero in some position, i t, right? Can you make any conclusion about what your function should return? A of i does not equal x, and return false. Yeah, so you only have to find one non-zero to know you to return false. But if you find one zero, you can't return true because that means everything is a zero. You are only looking at one. So that and then change this to false 
And this is the same thing. That code that you produce is exact is exactly does exactly the same thing that you did before. If you found a non-zero, you return false. That's good, right? That makes sense because it's not all zeros. You found one that's not a zero. And if that one is is a zero, then you're going to return true. You're still returning true when you find one zero. Yeah. Oh, so this not equal, this should be, uh, I'll just fix it for you. It should look like that. All right, what do you think about that? <laughs> so it, it correctly returns false. But where do you return true? How do you know at what point in the code where you reach that you know that you have all zeros? You need to have looked at every element. You can't say it's all zeros until you look at every single element. At what point have you finished looking at every single element? Yeah, yeah, try, try to get it in there. See if you can figure it out. A break statement? No such if statement. Yeah, you have to look at each individual element. You can return false if you find a non-zero. That's good. But you can't make a conclusion if you find, if one item is a zero, you can't make a conclusion. You have to have finished looking at all the elements first. Where in the code do you finish looking at the very, you know, what happens after you finish looking at the, the last element in A? So you want to return true. If you don't find a bad number, if everything is a zero, you're going to finish the loops without ever returning false. And that's the point where you can return true. If you try to return, if you look at every single element and you're willing to return false for every element, but you never find such an element, you never find an element that's not zero. Oh. So let's go ahead and return true. It's all zeros. So then just after the if statement, After the if statement? Just show, show me what you're thinking here. Uh, now once again, you're, you're, gonna, you're never going to execute more than a single iteration of the loop. You have to look at the rest of the eyes. You have to let the loops finish, otherwise you won't end up looking at everything. So are you ever, here, there's an element at position one, zero, okay? When I is one and T is zero, there's a value there, right? For position one, zero. Did you check that value? No, you didn't. You only check the values for I equals zero. You gotta check the values for I equaling zero all the way up to and including 49. <laughs> What do you think about that? At that point in the code, in line 15, you have already examined every element in A. And 
in no case, if you reached line 15, it means you didn't return. If you found a non-zero, at this point, you would have gotten out of there, and you would never get to here, see? The only way to get to here is if you pass every single one of these tests. Every A of I is a zero. Oh, by the way, that should be A of I T, right? Is this a two-dimensional array? There you go. We need to look at every A, I, T, every possible I and every possible T. That's why we need a nested loop, a loop within a loop. We set I to zero, and then we'll let T be zero, and then let T be one, and let T be two, and let T be 99. And then, oh, we're done looking at all possible T's for I equaling zero. Now, let's bump up I to one, and repeat, now let's try, for i equals 1, let's try t equals 0, t equals 1, t equals 99, then bump i up again. And you keep doing that until i hits 50. And then we're done the loop. We're done the outer loop. We're done the inner loop. And then we said, well, at this point, we looked at enter everything. We didn't return false. If we did return false, we wouldn't reach line 15. But if we do reach line 15, it means that we never found a non-zero. Anybody else? Let's look at some other people's code. Uh, would the daemon here be minus six? Which one? Daemon minus six. Oh, down here? <sighs> well, A should be, well, let me check the length. Three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven, right? Three, that's seven as well. So the asserts look good to me. This is right. So B is is going to return. If you call all zeros on B, it should return false. That looks good. I'm going to test it. Run it, run it down here. It doesn't show up here, huh? Oh, what's the problem? Oh, you got to pass the argument, see? The function here takes an array a comma integer length, but you didn't. You declared your function as taking array a, but you didn't pass. You didn't define the function as taking a second argument. You see the problem? So your function here, all zeros, takes two arguments a and len. You know, it takes an a, which is an array and then a length. But your function here is only defined as taking an array. You have to change the definition of your function, the arguments that are passed into your function. Can I add length? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. You don't need this. Wait, there is no, what am I saying? There is no length. This should be a two-dimensional array. Oh, so these, are, this is not good code here. This. Uh, is the problem to do a two-dimensional array? Uh, is this a multi-dimensional? A multi-dimensional array? Yes. Yeah, so oh, did I give the size fifty by hundred? Yeah. Oh, so you don't pass in the length, and and, and also this is this is not correct. Just fifty by a hundred. That's uh, that's five thousand entries. You only get seven. So, well, let me show you the syntax, okay? So this is a uh, 50, 100. And then you only need one zero here just to trigger the whole thing to be zero. And that's how you do it. Can you fix the other one? Yeah. Get rid of length. We don't need LEN. Yeah. And then would I get rid of the, or just leave it as a statement for the test? No, B? Yeah. No, you have to make B look like A. It's going to be 50 by 100. And start by setting it to, um, you know, 50 by 100. 
So somewhere in B, we have to put a non-zero, right? So if you go, you, this will put the one in the first position. It's not a good test. Let's put the one somewhere deep inside there. Let's set that equal to zero. Yeah, and then in the next line, in line 21, let's do say like B of, you know, 20, 37 equals one. Yeah. So we're going to put one non-zero in there in some random position, not in the first position. No, no bracket, no brace rather, no brace, just one. We're just asserting one value in position 2037. So we start with B equaling all zeros just like A, and then we stick a one in there at some, you know, deep place in the, in the two-dimensional array. And then when we call the function, we only call it by passing the arrays. Not, we don't have to pass the, the size because the, the problem specifies a specific set of dimensions, 50 by 100. There you go. Let's see if that works. Oh, I have to do that part, right? Value not ignored as it ought to be. Void value not ignored as, it, oh, missing a semicolon in 24. There we go. All tests passed. Maybe you want to put an S here. Tests, all, right, all tests passed. And you've got a period there, so it's a sentence. So let's 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 use an uppercase because it's a it's a full it's a sentence, right? You know, if you want to be extra clean, you know, it looks good, right? When you do the extra work to make it perfect. All right. Any other? Uh, let's look at some more. I think it's great to, to do code together. I, I maybe I'm wrong. But it's a, does so anyone else want to stick their code up here so we can criticize it and embarrass you and shame you? Yeah. Number five. Let's look at that, right? EX5, right? Come on. <coughs> All right, let's look at this one. Unlucky. So write a function named unlucky that returns true if the if the array passed into it has a 13 in it. Right? We just need one 13. Is that right? It looks like your logic has got some issues. The test code looks good. Line 16 and down looks great. The problem is the logic in lines 7 through 11, that logic of your unlucky function, there's a, there's a, a logic error. And it's similar to the last uh, program that we looked at. Yeah, you, don't, you only look at the first element. You either return true because you find a 13 when i is 0, or you return false. So you never get past i equals 0. You look at the first element, and then you make a final determination about the whole array. Oh, by the way, this test is bad. The, hold it right there. Let's leave your code alone. Let's, can you put it back? Yeah. Your test code is inadequate because it doesn't catch this mistake. See, your first position has a 13. And so it'll find it here, right? And here, your first position is not a 13, but there's no 13 else in there. So your test code, let's run your test code, and I'll show you that your test code. Yeah, it's, it gets to be, and then it says it's 20. It compiles, but when it runs, it says it's 20. It says what? It says B is a problem? Yeah. I, I don't see that, but maybe. Let's, let's look at it. 
up. Oh. So, yeah, it's not unlucky. So this is, if it's unlucky, it should be false, right? And it's returning true for that? Oh, 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 I see the problem. Like you got assignment here. You don't have comparison. You're setting the value at AI to 13. You're not comparing AI to 13. You're changing AI. You're writing whatever's in AI. You're overwriting it with the value 13. Comparison is double equal sign. There we go. You want to save that? There we go. Now watch this. Now it's going to say all tests passed. See that? But it's but there's a I see a logic error here. And then I see that your test code is not good. It doesn't reveal the error. Because look, look at this is not a good if you this is called a boundary case. It's a special case. Everything is a zero. And here's another special case. 13 is in the first position. You should, why don't you create a, you can leave the A and B alone, but let's create a C that has some variation that doesn't, that, that avoids these special cases and tries to, uh, tries to give the function more, something more generic. That's a very good one. And we need another one because A, you need something that's more general than A. See, in A, the first element is 13. I want the element 13 to be somewhere deep inside the, the array. I don't, want the, I don't want the triggering element 13 to be in the very first position. That's a special case. See, I want a generic case. There you go. See, 13 is now in the third position. You see, if you use special cases, uh, you're not going to be testing the, the, the program uh, very well. All right, so we've got to add assertions for those. All right, here we go. See, the problem with relying on <coughs> test code is that the test code may be inadequate. And, uh, ultimately, it's, it's good to have something that's like a mathematical proof of correctness. If you can prove that your algorithm is correct and always working you know, on a theoretical level, then you're not relying on your test code alone anymore. All right, so that, that's good, right? D is unlucky because there's a 13 in there. C is not unlucky, so we return false. B is not unlucky because there's no 13. A is unlucky because there's a lot of 13s. All right. Let's try that. You want to save that? And now when we run this, now the test code fails. It fails on D. See, that's why I asked you to put D in there, because the 13 is not in the first position. So it fails when there's, when there's a 13. The code doesn't fail for C. So if there's no 13, it seems to be running nicely, right? The problem is the function fails when there's a 13 in a place other than the first position. So what does that mean? To to what? No, to go ahead and do it because I can't hear you. So. Exactly. 
You can't return false. False means is there's no 13. You can't return false until you look at every value. You have to let the loop complete. And it, as, the, as i progresses from 0 to length minus 1, you're going to check each the value at each of those indices to see if there's a 13. So you have to let that process complete. And of course, you can exit the process. If you find a 13, you're going to exit that process by returning true. It's unlucky. But if the, if the process completes without hitting that return true statement, it means you looked at everything. There's no 13. It's not unlucky. Let's return false. That's good. So very similar, those two problems, the same logic organization is involved there. All right, who else? Anybody? Or uh, Sheridan, if you want to do another one, or anybody in here? Um, personally, I don't know four. I, I don't know where to start with this for normal. Four? Yeah, because I was trying to think about it, and I knew you couldn't set your arrays using So it's in here, right? Detecting prime numbers? No, we're on the wrong one. It's not loops, it's functions, right? Arrays. Arrays, sorry, arrays. Four. Identical arrays. Here it is. You know, is A and B identical? What does it mean for A and B to be identical? Yeah, the two, they have the same numbers in them. The same length. Well, there's the length there, so they, they have to have the same length. So A and B are identical if they have the same, if they're pairwise equivalent. Let's, let's start by looking at um, an example. Where's your, your code here? Uh, this is five here, right? A uh, four, rather, working on four. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, make a hello program. Just say hi. Actually, instead of saying hi, let's say all tests passed, just to get ready for that, because that's what we're going to have to do eventually. All right, so let's try this. Let's get this to go. Uh, so I'm, I'm in charge of doing this part, right? So let me go to there. All test passed. OK, so we got that done. Now, let's, let's code up a stub. Let's go ahead and. You know, above the main, let's 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 uh, de define a function name, R identical that returns a bool. Yeah, integer. Integer b. Integer length. Good. And let's have it return. Either true or false, it doesn't matter. It has to, to compile, we have to return a bool. That's our stub. There we go. If you want, let me try it. Let's save that. I'm not going to run it. I'm just going to compile it. OK, it compiles. So let's go forward. Let's write some test code. Let's create an A. Let's create a B. And then call the function and examine the returned value. Yeah, just a bunch of numbers. That's enough. Four is good. Don't forget the semicolon. And you'll put a space before the 1 in the 12, but you don't put a space after the 6 in 66. It doesn't look symmetric to me. Oh, you're going to take it out. OK. You know, yeah, that's fine. It's better like this, right? I would have put the space in after the 66, but that's just me. You know, that's just aesthetics. 
But this is, no, 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 do it your way, you know, do, 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 do it your way. Not, not my way, do it your way, okay? <laughs> so these are different, right? So this is where they're different. Let's create another one where they're the same. Right? I'll just define a C, maybe, that's identical to A. You could just copy A. Just go ahead and copy it up there. Yeah, yeah, like that. It's good. There we go, good. All right, so A equals, A is not identical to B, but A is identical to C. Let's, let's throw the assertions in there that, uh, that, that state that. Do I call the function? Yeah, we gotta call the function, yeah. So, yeah, okay. We could pass the for in directly into the function call, but this way is all right, too. It's good documentation. There, that's good. That's great. That looks good to me. Now, let, before we run this program, what's going to happen when we run it? Let's figure it out. Just, uh, which line is it going to fail on? Is it going to fail on 16 or is it going to fail on 17? Yeah, it'll fail on 16. Exactly. All right, I'm going to test it. Okay. Sixteen, right there. So we got it. So now, look. Do you see what we did here? We didn't think about what we had to do, right? We we just we created the test code already. We didn't work on the algorithm yet. We know we have to do this. We know. To, let's get it out of the way. Let's not try to solve you know, everything all at one time, let's chop it into steps, into pieces. So we've written the test code. And by the way, this is a strategy here. This is a, a we're, I mean, we're, we're going through what's called a, a, um, a test first strategy or test, I'm sorry, test driven development, test driven development. I don't know if people are using that term anymore, but a couple of years ago, that was a hot, concept and everybody was saying test driven development that's what we're going to do and i and there was a student here he got hired at amazon he got a pretty nice job at amazon and he um he told me yeah we do test driven development you know we write our test code first and he's giving me a lecture on on this just to let you know that you know what what you're learning here this this sort of habit that i'm trying to ingrain into you about writing your tests first and without thinking about the details of how to solve the problem, you can you can write your tests, you can develop your tests, and then and then start to think about the details of how to implement that function. All right, so what are we going to do? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and do that. And that looks pretty good. Now, remember the other problem, the two other problems we looked at, okay? What was the pattern? The pattern was this, okay? For some i, some test succeeded. Some, some condition was true or false, whatever, right? Some condition 
was true, and we knew to return true or false right there on the spot. We saw one thing, we looked at one eye, and we made a conclusion. It's unlucky because we found a 13. So one of the A's equaled 13, and that's when, in that moment, we returned true. But to return false, that it's, unlu that it's not unlucky, we had to wait to finish the loop before we made a conclusion about what the function returns. So what test are we going to do? This is the same as the other problems. So what is the comparison that you're going to do here? And what conclusion can you make just by looking at one element? Or one index, because we've got two arrays. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it exactly. Yeah, go ahead and type that up in there. Now, just, just do a mental check, okay? Do a mental check. Give me an example when that return true happens. When you're comparing A and B. Huh? So, you see, A and B is not a good... I'm going to change this. Watch this. See this? Look at, look at what I just did. Look at B now. Look at the third element in B. It's the same as the third element in A. Okay. What's your, what's your code going to return for this? You found an I where two of the values were the same. So you're returning true to say that the two arrays in total are identical. Isn't that a problem? How are you going to fix that? You, you can't conclude that they're identical by looking at one pair. This is the same mistake that, that, that we had before. What can you conclude by looking at one pair? Huh? Yeah, what, can you make it? Keep going there. Keep thinking it out. Yeah, you got to keep going. They all have to equal each other before returning true. You have to finish the loop before returning true. What do you think of that, Sheridan? Oh, see that not equals? There should only be one, uh, the one equal sign. Yeah, there you go. Does this make sense? You found 
one index i for which a of i and b of i are different. They can't be identical. a and b can't be identical. We found one case, one i, one index, where the, 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 the two pair of values were not equal. So we can say we're going to return false. They're not identical. That makes sense, right? And if we finish the loop and we never return false, we didn't find anything that wasn't equal to each other. We didn't find any pair that weren't equal. Only then, in line 12, can we return true. No, I think this code is correct. Let's try it. Well, the test passed. We don't know if they're good tests, but you know, we could write more tests, or we could do more reasoning, or you know, or we could just say, "I'm we're we're comfortable." Is there any? I'm comfortable. Is there anyone who's not comfortable with this solution that wants to do more analysis or more testing? Okay, let's we'll ship this. We're going to ship this. This is going to. This is going to go into the space shuttle, you know, for the next space shuttle launch. This has to work, right? So it has to be fully tested. All right. Okay, what else would you want to do? So we did three prompts already. Sheridan had three prompts we worked on. It's good. What else do you want to do? Do you want to do anything else today? Uh, we can look at someone else's code. Yeah? You want to look at yours? Which one? The number is DX3. DX3? Yeah. Hold on. I'm saying I can't change C, but I have different Let's take a look. What the heck? I didn't get anything here. What is going on? No such file or directory open. Are you Dustin? Yeah. How come I don't see anything? Was oh, it homework? No. Oh, you're in there, right? No. So what you did is this. I'll show everybody. Yeah. I don't you did that. show the uh, home and favorites. Yeah. And then I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to take show root file system and take that out. That's that workspace folder. So you're inside homework. And um, arrays and this three, right? That one. All right. So that's good that you're doing that. That's that's the way to do it. Exactly how to do it. Just reconfigure things. There we go. So that's an. Well, look, you had that double equal sign. Remember, there's only one equal sign in there. Can you access this? I can't access your file of contents. Your terminal. It's complaining about the C. Yeah. It's saying that uh, name lookup of C changed for ISO for scoping. So what the heck is that about? You know, I like that you could write C++ here, actually. <laughs> oh, look, semicolon right there. What's that doing there? There we go. That's it. Yeah, that's all it was. So this looks, um, this looks good. You return false here. Not all zeros. Return true all zeros. That's good. Yeah, it's a set the code we just worked out. That's good. Yeah, I just I was wondering what that C was about. It was just a syntax. Yep. Just a just a syntax error, just a, you know, writing the code. Anybody else? You guys don't want to cover anything? Quizzes or I can we can get into the next um, uh, topic of sorting. 
or we can um, do more problems together. Yeah. Huh? Okay, you go over example six. Example six? I wrote the code. Um, I just wanted to, it's saying it doesn't like my search. I just want to know if I wrote the search wrong or if I wrote the search. Let me see what it says here. Hold on. Oh, it's good, right? And then you have this uh, assertion failure. Line 20. So this function, what does increase do, by the way? It's going to be increasing in the array of the... Oh, it tests to see if this is increasing. Yeah. Right. Wait, in this problem here, I, I gave you the name is a little different, right? Is strictly increasing. So I wanted you to use this name exactly like this, but it's okay the way you did it. Actually, you know this is this is all right, but um, I think if you use this, it's safer with the greater. You know, Mark is going to look at that and say, "I he didn't follow the instructions. We gave him the name. He used his own name. His own name is worse than the other one because it's less information about it. You know, so I recommend not just for this class, but other classes. Some instructors." Or you know, really rigid about what they want to see submitted. So try to follow the instructions more carefully. And, and that's just a recommendation to avoid potential disputes with your instructor later on. Not it's not that you're doing it wrong or anything. Okay. All right. So um, there we go. Good. Yeah. Change it in there. So is A strictly increasing? In other words, do the values go up in A? And if I look at this A here, I see the values are going, they're strictly increasing. That's good, yeah. But these are not, in B, they're not strictly increasing. They, they go up, but then they drop down. Like when from 34, it drops down to 11, so that's not increasing anymore. So B should be false, it's not strictly increasing. But A should be true, it is strictly increasing. And when we run this, it says line 20, which is this one, this fails. So it, it's returning false when we pass in A. It's returning false when we pass in A. So there's some logic error in there. Or the test code is bad. But the test code looks good to me. It's, the test code is simpler. It's a seven. Is seven correct? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, well, that's the same as this one. A seven is correct. So the test code looks okay. And I don't know if the test code is sufficient to catch all possible bugs, but um, the test code looks correct. So I believe that there's a bug in the, in the program because the test code, the simple test code is failing. So I believe there's a bug in here somewhere. So what is the bug? So what we got to we're going to compare pairs of values. We're going to compare, you know, of the value at i with the value that's at i plus one. And we, what do we want there? We want that the value at i plus one needs to be strictly greater than the value at i. Okay. What we want is for a of i to be less than, strictly less than, the value at i plus 1. But that's not what you're, that's not what you're testing, right? You're testing for inequality. You're returning false if a of i does, does not equal a of i plus 1. That, that's a different problem. We don't want inequality. Look, here's, look at the first two, you look at, suppose A is zero. Let's look at the first pair of values. If A is zero, then A of I plus, then A of I is two, and A of I plus one is four, okay? So we want to compare two and four, and two needs to be less than four. So if two is greater than four, then the whole thing is bad. 
So we're trying to figure out when do we return true, when do we return false. We're, we're not going to return, do we, we're going to return false inside the loop. If we find one bad pair, we'll return false. But what does a bad pair look like? Here, I here is 0, 1, 2, 3. Here, when I is 3, and I plus 1 is 4, this is the first occurrence of a bad pair. So when A of I is greater than A of I plus 1, then we return false. But you're not doing that. Can you fix that? Am I talking too much? What's the not symbol in there? It's not less than? There's no not less than. You have to make it greater than. Greater than is equivalent to not less than. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no not less than. I mean, there could be. They, they could add it, but they, they don't have it. So, um, yeah, that's the case. That's, that's the, there's the problem. If you find one I, such that A of I is bigger than A of I plus 1, if you find one I for that, then you know the whole list is bad because we, we found one bad apple in the barrel, so the whole barrel is going to be rejected. It's not a strictly increasing sequence. So that looks good to me. Let's see if that works. It doesn't work. It's still line 20. What's going on? What did we do wrong? See, it's finding a bad pair in line 16. This is a hard one to get. Anybody get it? What's going on? I know, I know the answer because I've been doing this for so long. It's not that I'm smart, okay? It's not that I... i just been doing this, you know, like I can be mostly half asleep up here and I'm going to get the answer. Yeah, go ahead. What's, what's, what's going on here? You know? Yeah, what? No, no, it's not that. It's a hard to find bug. It's a hard to find bug. Now, in another language, okay, here's my hint. In another language like Java or I think Objective-C, but I'm not sure. I don't use it that much. In Java, I know. In C-sharp, I know. You'll have, this won't, um, this, you'll get a, a runtime exception. It'll say, array, it'll say, array index out of bounds. You're trying to access a non-existent element in the array. But now a C++ will not do that. That won't give it to us. The C++ is that old language where they don't want to add code that does range checking because they want to shave off every, you know, every wasted piece of, you know, code that's in there. So they don't do range checking. I think you, maybe we could turn it on. There might be a compiler setting to turn on range checking. Let me see if I can. Let me look. Is it this? Does this do? You can integrate. No, I don't think it's. Bounds check. You know, I'm not getting a. You can use static analyzers such as CPP check when you run your above code. So that, that's not, I don't think you can turn it on.
Yeah, I'm not going to. Well, I'll try one more web page. And now we're not using uh, GCC, we're using um, Clang. Does anyone have the solution, by the way? I'm, I'm sort of getting off on a tangent here. Did you fix it? What's the problem? Anybody got it? The range, the range, you know what I mean by range checking? We're going past the end of the array. We're reading a value past the end of the array. It's probably finding a zero. Look at this, this these values are, um, what is it, line 20, right? These values are laid out in memory. You've got four bytes for a zero, for a two. Because these are ints, so they take a four bytes. And the four bytes have a two in it. It's going to be zero, zero. You know, the first three bytes are going to have zeros, and then you're going to have a zero and a two in the fourth byte. Is that right? Because it's, um, um, it's um, what do you call it? It's um, least uh, significant byte first. What's that called? That's called um, little endian. So it'll be a 2 in the first byte, and then a 0, then a 0, then a 0. I think that's what it looks like. I can talk about that in a minute. But there's, um, you know, 4 bytes for here, 4 bytes for that, 4 bytes for that. That's a 6, that's an 8, it's a 10, there's a 12, 14. In memory, you've got these groups of 4 bytes one after another where the array is stored. But what about the 4 bytes just following the end of the array? What is, what's in the four bytes right after the end of the array? Well, we don't know, right? But I believe there's a good chance that it's a zero. And you're reading that, your code reads that zero. Your code reads past the end of the array. You see it? Yeah, that's, see, I, look what happens. Like when I equals, Seven, len is seven. Okay. When i equals seven, we we don't execute the loop statements, right? We don't do the sub statements when when length is seven. When i is seven, we're done. So the last value that i takes on that runs the body of the loop is six. So when i equals six, the body of the loop runs. Now, if i is 6, we're going we're gonna to compare a of 6 with a of 7. i is 6, so i plus 1 is 7. So what's, what's a of 7? You tell me, what, what is a of 7 here? Let's see. This is, a of 0 is 2. a of 1, a of 2, a of 3, a of 4, a of 5 is 12. A of 6 is 14, but what's A of 7? Your code accesses A of 7. Do you see the problem? Because you've gone past the end of the array. And I believe it's a 0. So you, your code find, compares 14 with 0, and it says, oh, oh, it's not strictly increasing because we're at 14 and we're dropping down to a 0. Can you fix it? Uh, it's just a, it's just a little, little tiny fix, huh? There's an ADDA where it's compared A of five to A of five plus one, and then don't forget to use A of five minus one or N minus one. I mean, you can compare. You can do it. The alternative to what you did here is this. And I'm not recommending this. I'm just saying, if you want to use a i minus 1, you compare a of i minus 1 with a of i. You could do that. But this has the same problem, because when you're going to start with i equaling 0. So the first a of i minus 1, when i is 0, is going to be minus 1. So you're going to, you're going to
going to use minus 1 as the index into A. So you've got, it's the same problem here. You're not giving a valid index. You're going too far, that's all. Just don't go so far. You're stopping, you're letting I get too big. You've got to stop I earlier. No, I, you're letting I get to 6. We've already seen that I should not get to 6. If I gets to 5, are we okay? Yeah. When I gets to 5, we're going to compare, you know, this is A of 5 with A of 6. Because, you know, when I gets to 5, I plus 1 is 6. So we're going to, we're going to look at the last value. So you want to stop... You know, when, a, when I hit 6, not when it hit 7. No, no. Is there another way to do it? Yeah, but that's that good because the length is seven. You want to give the right number. You can't change that part. You got to, that's not a readable code, okay? Yeah, that's, that's that will work. That will make the code run. That will make the code run correctly, but is no longer readable because the length. We're lying about the length, okay? And we don't want to lie about the length. Can you clear the memory? Huh? No, you're, you're letting I hit 7. Just don't let I, I mean, don't let I hit 7. Exit when I hit 6. That's it. Where do you limit I? Yeah. Can you tell these guys back there. See, that's the loop condition. That's what controls how big I gets. You don't need parentheses there because the subtraction will run before the comparison operation, before the less than. Okay. You can put them in there if you like, but you don't normally see it because less than has a very low precedent. Does this make sense? Yeah. You're, you've got to stop one. It's, this is the one-off problem. Remember I was telling you about the one-off problem? This is, an, this is an instance of the one-off problem. Now nail this in there. This is, happens all the time. All right, this looks great. Let's try it now. All test passed. I'm happy with the solution. You know, the test code is not, not exhaustive, but it's pretty good. Right? I think it's all right. There's not a lot you can test here. <clears throat> Actually, you should have a test where the numbers... Let's create another vector B, an array B. That's a copy of A, but simply has uh, two values that are the same. So it doesn't drop down, but it levels out. Yeah, yeah, copy that. And say, you know, see where it goes six to eight? No, not the first. See, you put it in the first place. That's a boundary case. See, you got to make it more generic. There you go. You put it in the middle. There you go. So this is not strictly increasing. It's, it's non-decreasing, we say. It's non-decreasing, but it's not strictly increasing. And now let's add the assertion.
Nope, C. Very good. Do you think it's going to run? Let's try it. No, oh, it fails. Huh, I didn't even think about this, but I was sort of lazy. And I thought, well, yeah, we should put another test case in there. And, and look, we got it wrong. Because that, that just, for sure, C is not strictly increasing, right? It's not, but it, it's failing. It's a, when we say strictly, it's strictly increasing should return false, but it doesn't. It's returning true. We got it wrong. We're almost done. What's the problem? See, we, you know, your your code doesn't catch the case when the numbers, the value at i and the, when you compare it to the value at i plus 1, if they're equal to each other, I think someone mentioned this, right? Was it? I think we mentioned this. Can you fix it? <laughs> so we're not rejecting when, when a of i equals a of i plus 1. We need to reject in that case. Yeah, so it should be greater than or equal to. There you go. That means greater than or equal to. So if it's greater than or equal to i plus 1, then it fails. So let's see if we got it right now. There we go. We got it. Thank God we thought to add an extra test case.